Hi friends, my name is Nishantha. I am a dyslexia coach and teacher. I work here in Southern California. On this channel, I teach dyslexics how to do knowledge work. This is such a cool time to be a dyslexic because now we have so many awesome tools available to us that we didn't have before. In this video, I'm gonna show you my top 10 favorite apps that every dyslexic person should know about. It's gonna help you become more productive and it's gonna help you do knowledge work a lot easier. So I split this video up into four parts. First, I'm gonna show you my favorite apps for productivity. Then I'll show you my favorite apps for reading. Then I'll show you my favorite apps that I used to write. And then I'll show you my favorite apps for note taking. These are all very dyslexia specific to help me overcome my dyslexia. Stick around until the end of the video, I have something special for you. So let's jump into the first category, productivity. Okay, so my favorite productivity apps are Things3 and Notion. Things3. I love Things3 for productivity because of the interface. It's so clean and minimalistic and it uses the getting things done methodology. Things3 seems to be designed from the ground up around Getting Things Done by David Allen. Since I'm a practitioner of the Getting Things Done system, this app helps me implement GDT or Getting Things Done flawlessly on all my devices and I love it. The next productivity app that I love is Notion. So Notion is a knowledge management and note-taking system, but the way I use it mostly is for project management. So whenever I'm working on different projects, I have different workflows that my different projects have to go through. So like if I'm shooting a YouTube video, I know I have to think about an idea, research that idea, come up with a script, edit that script, shoot that video, sh uh, edit that video, then upload it to YouTube. So that's a process. A different process for writing could be like, I have to research something, then I have to maybe talk to some people, uh, and then I write the first draft, then I edit it, then I talk to other people, do some more research, uh, and then at the end, it's a finished product, right? So these different workflows, um, most of the time, I had to manage those in my head. But with Notion, what you can do is you can kind of set up a workflow, and as your project gets more and more complete, it can kind of go through this process all the way to the end. And you can track multiple projects and ideas and concept and content that you're creating through Notion. It's really awesome. All right, a quick announcement before we get to the rest of the video. I'm doing a little experiment. I wanna give away three one hour free dyslexia coaching sessions with me. All you gotta do is comment below saying, I want a coaching session and then follow me on Instagram and then send me a DM and then uh, you'll be entered and I'll pick three people at the end of this uh, month and then I'll you'll get a free coaching session if that's something you're interested in. All right, let's jump back into the video. All right, so the next category of tools is for reading. Since I'm a dyslexic, I'm, sometimes I have challenges with reading and these tools and apps really help me get through the reading that I need to get done. So my favorite app ever that I have on my phone, it's the one that I use every single day and it's the one that I use the most, is Audible. Audible is a audiobook player and it also comes with a library of books that you can buy so I use this on a daily basis every single day I really recommend it if you're a dyslexic and you don't have an audible subscription what are you doing just go buy one it'll like completely change your life so that's audible and every I think everyone already kind of knows that is a really good app for reading but another app that I use for reading is called speechify speechify is a text-to-speech application and what it does, it allows me to read the internet. So if I find an article or a book or some, some PDF or something that, um, that, that's written in a text and it's kind of too long, maybe it's like a couple of thousand words, uh, instead of reading it, it's much faster for me to read it on Speechify. Basically, I just click one button and the, the text turns into speech and it gets sent to my phone and I just listen to it just like I would be listening to Audible. It's awesome. And the guy who created Speechify, he's pretty dope. He's also dyslexic. Uh, the next app that I use all the time is called Instapaper, and Instapaper is a way that I save like really good blogs. So if I'm reading the internet and I find like a really good article, instead of using a bookmark or an RSS feed, I'll just send it to Instapaper. And when I use it on Instapaper, I'm able to highlight and save those highlights and things through Instapaper. And the next favorite thing or app that I use for reading is Kindle. I have a Kindle app on all my devices and I also have a little Kindle Paperwhite thing that I use at night. Kindle is pretty dope. I, I know I always talk about ear reading as like being the most awesome thing, but uh, sometimes I like to use eye reading, especially when I'm trying to fall asleep. So I use Kindle for that purpose. And sometimes you, you can find books on Audible, which kind of sucks. So sometimes I do have to use my Kindle to read certain books. So this next category of tools and apps are for writing as dyslexics. I know you guys got some issues with writing. I know I do. I have issues with the writing, spelling, structuring, all these different things. And these apps really help me out. So uh, the first app that I love using for writing is called MindNode. MindNode is a mind mapping application. It like helps me brainstorm an idea before I jump into 
the writing process. And it's really cool. I did a video on this. I'll link it to uh, to one of the cards below or something. But it kind of goes through how I take an idea and like turn it into something that's structurally sound before I start working on it. My node really helps with that. It has a lot of powerful features. I think you guys should just check it out for yourselves. It's pretty pretty awesome and it's pretty amazing. Check out the link. It's in the description below. The next app that I use is something I just discovered recently. It's called Otter IO. And basically what it is, is it's a dictation application. So it sits on my phone and whenever I need to write something, what I'll do is I'll pull up my mind node on, uh, on my, on my phone. I'll have it open and I'll have audio, uh, Otter IO open and I'll just talk into my, to my, uh, AirPods. And basically what it does is it takes the words that I'm saying and turns it into text. And then later on, I'll jump into Notion again, which is my um, like project management application, which I already kind of talked about. I'll take all those notes, I'll paste it on there, and then I'll really edit all that information on there through Notion. And Notion's really cool because it has these things called content blocks, and basically you can move certain items up and down, around, into different paragraphs and things, depending on the thing that you're trying to write needs to be. So it's pretty dope. So these three things in combination, MindNote, Otter, and Notion really helps you kind of eliminate all the, all the BS of being dyslexic and just really focus on the important thing, which is being able to communicate ideas so someone else can actually understand them. So the next category of apps I want to talk to you guys about is for note-taking. My favorite app for note-taking uh, is Roam Research. I did a video on Roam Research. It's kind of complex and complicated to explain, but the basic idea is I want to put notes onto a system without having to think about where the thing should go, where the note piece of note should go. And the application should be able to kind of figure that out. And whenever I'm looking for something, it should be able to bring that up into like, so I can see it. So it's kind of like write some notes and forget it type of system. Uh, and it's pretty awesome. Any piece of content or idea that I've created inside my head, I try to throw it into my Roam database. And my Roam database kind of acts like a, like a second mind or like a, like a digital brain that I can kind of talk to whenever I need to get access to something that I've already talked about or thought about or some idea that I've already had. I know it's safe in, in my Roam database, so um, I, I can move on and produce things in Notion. Second app that I love using for note-taking is something called Notability. Notability is an app that you use with your Apple Pencil. And the really cool thing about Notability is it allows you to save the, the, the marks that you're making um, with the Apple Pencil and it attaches like sound to it. So I could be talking through an idea on on Notability and as as I'm writing, it's going to record what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying as well as what I'm writing. So the really cool thing about having these two things together is when I go back to my note, I can play the, uh, the audio and then if I, if I touch different areas of my note, it's going to play back exactly what I was saying while I was writing. So basically I use this uh, function uh, when I'm trying to figure out how to teach a scientific concept to my students in seventh grade. Uh, and I like kind of see what, how the words and the pictures kind of wrote together in order to explain an idea. An another really cool thing about uh, Notability is that there's a really cool filing system on there. So you can kind of organize your notes in a nice way. And the third note-taking app that I've just recently discovered is something called Concepts. And Concepts are uh, like an architectural design type of uh, iPad app with an Apple Pencil, but it basically has a bunch of tools that you can use in order to create sketch notes. Uh, I did a video on visual thinking. I'll put, I'll put a link to that um, down here if you guys want to check it out. I basically do sketch notes inside Concept. So these 10 or 11 apps are kind of what I use in order to help me overcome the challenges of being a dyslexic and either in order to help me create a lot more knowledge work and help me become more productive and smarter and more creative. Uh, than if I didn't have these. This is a beautiful time to be living uh, because of all the, the technology that's there to kind of help us leverage our mind, leverage our thinking. So yeah, I hope you guys like this. Um, I made another video on hardware that I use. I'll link that uh, to uh, the video below right here. Or I'll put it somewhere around here. You guys should really check it out and it kind of goes into why I use the, the, the hardware that I use in order to run these applications. If you're dyslexic and you wanna join a community of like-minded dyslexic people, join the community. It's at community.howtodyslexia.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, everybody, I love you. See you guys on the next video. Bye.